Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tactics FPL. It's Fran here and I'm back with a Gaming 3 team reveal. As you guys probably know, I did get towards a 100k rank, a 100,811 finish by the time of Gaming 2 ending. So that was actually a really positive start to the first two weeks of FPL. And it did show to, to me at least that my team definitely was in the right position even to the extent where I didn't really know what to spend the transfer on, with exception to Leon Bailey, who obviously has been a huge problem point. As you guys can see above me, the team value is 100.3 million, with 0.4 million in the bank. If you guys look at that, you'll probably know exactly what happened, as well as if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, I did make a significantly huge mistake. I'll talk about that when I get into my midfielders. As far as the defenders this week, you'll see that it's the exact same lineup as last week, with an exception. Nico Williams is joining the team, and I am playing a back five this week. So Nico Williams will be the player playing versus Everton. He is playing away from home, so that's an interesting thing to think about. But I really think this Everton team have been extremely poor. The decision was either between Andreas, who's playing Brentford at home, or Nico Williams, who's playing versus Everton. I just like the chances of getting a clean sheet versus Everton. Even when looking at Aston Villa, who haven't really been a very good defensive team, they've had defensive injuries as well. They were very close to getting a clean sheet versus Everton. I just think the, the opportunity is there for new Nottingham Forest as well. As far as the rest of my team, very, very happy with the way it looks. Diaz, Cancelo, those are players that are locked. I know a lot of people have been talking and deliberating about options like Cucurella going off City and, and the Newcastle game. I just think what remembering and casting my mind back into when they played Newcastle at home, when Newcastle had a very, very good home run for a while, City completely obliterated them. And I can just see that happening once again. I don't really see this as an opportunity to move off of a City defender. And I didn't have the opportunity to move into a Chelsea defender that I liked without going for a City or without keeping a City defender in my team. So if you look at the team structure, I could clearly move from Ruben Diaz into someone like Cucurella because it's a downgrade. Or I could go Ruben Diaz to Walker. But I don't see the point of actually doing this transfer this week especially when I can roll the transfer to the next week as I individually prefer Ruben Diaz over both Cucurella and Walker independently. If I have the chance to actually go into both Cucurella and Walker without any transfers this week, then I probably would have done that. But because I had zero in the bank and Walker costs 5.1 and I didn't really want to go into Ake because he could be an extremely fast transfer in and out, maybe due to rotation, maybe even due to Stones coming back or Laporte actually we don't really know much about his injury schedule and whether it'll be expedited and whether he'll return back to play. So that was really something I didn't want to play with this week, even though Ake looks like such an interesting kind of aerial threat. So the defense this week is exactly as it is. Really happy with Trent and James, as you can see, continuing to earn a lot of bonus points and be consistent attacking options, James being one of the most interesting ones when it comes to finishing in front of goal. If we move into the midfield, that is actually relatively the same as last week, with the exception of Bailey. Bailey has left my team. I have zero. I, I'm planning to have 0 0.4 million in the bank. I'm moving into Reed from Fulham. No reason not to go triple Fulham, even if I go Mitrovic later on in the season. I don't see the point in going for anyone else. There's obviously options like Pearson. There's other 4.5 mints as well. I just didn't want to go into De Silva because on the off chance that I wanted to move into someone like Perisic next week, I do need that 0 0.4 million in the bank to move into him, especially if I wanted to go something like Perisic, Cucurella, if for some reason I didn't back the City defense anymore. But I wanted to keep my options open, and that's exactly why I went for the simple transfer of Bailey into Reed, and therefore I'm just playing Martinelli and Salah this week. So that's going to be how things stand, alongside Luis Diaz as well, who pretty much improved his standing, in my opinion, in my cheat sheet and also within my team. Because truly, thanks to Darwin Nunez and his antics, I guess, and him sort of being bossed by Anderson in that game, unfortunately, getting the best of him from a mental point of view. So that pretty much made things too easy for me for my team selection. And I, I really don't see the, the value of going into Cucurella early. As mentioned, I didn't want to take a hit to play Cucurella and a City defender. Just didn't seem like it, it made sense when both Andreas and Nico Williams have good games on paper. And I just want more information. Something that I've learned from the previous year that was a mistake of mine. I definitely was a little too aggressive without information. And here I am sort of playing a, a little bit more of a passive approach towards the start of the season so that I can actually consolidate on what I think is already a good team on paper uh, that will be improved next week so long as I make the right moves with the two transfers that I'll have rolling. So that's how things stand with the midfield. If I move into the forwards, you can see it's still going to be the exact same. It's Haaland and Jesus. No reason to move off of them. Obviously, Kane was a sort of punt that I think some managers might even be tempted to do going away from Haaland and moving into Kane because I really think he is a great captaincy option this week. I didn't really see the opportunity to do that or really the need to do that because Haaland for me is still going to be a top option 
versus Newcastle. Yes, the Newcastle defense have gotten two clean sheets back to back, but I do think the City team is absolutely different. They are going to be, in my opinion, a side that can absolutely crumple this Newcastle team, regardless of their defensive improvements. And that's pretty much what Haaland is there to do. He is there to score goals, and he is hopefully there in my team to score goals versus Newcastle. So that's how I see things for now. Haaland's going to stay in my team for a while. Jesus, the exact same thing. I didn't really think about Jesus as a captaincy shout. He's probably, him and Salah are the ones at the forefront of my mind in terms of captaincy options this week, but I really think the option is super clear. The captaincy is actually going to be put on Mo Salah. There's no reason not to go Mo Salah. Uh, the fixture's perfect on paper. United still look absolutely terrible. The de defense hasn't been organized. They're still trying to play attacking possession-based football, and I just really feel like the, the United team just hasn't ramped up enough at all to deal with this Liverpool team, even if they have some injuries and, and, and have played, I guess, poorer than people expect. Ultimately, I think when you look at the performance, 10 men versus Crystal Palace, it still looked exceptional. I'm really struggling to see how Salah isn't the best captaincy option versus United, and that's how things stand for me for now. As far as tinkering for my team, as I mentioned, the options are going into something like Cucurella and Walker in the subsequent week for game week four. But for now, no real interest in actually making the early transfer, and therefore things are going to stay exactly the way they are with Nico Williams playing within the starting 11 this week. So thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys very, very shortly for the live stream.